into where we been. First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. We're going to start at verse 17. And in context in this uh, in this chapter, remember, this is the chapter regarding Elijah. We've been here. And let me share so y'all can see. We've been here. So I'm going to share the screen for y'all to see. And as you can see in verse 17, remember, this is about Elijah where he says it's not going to rain for that span of, of years. And he said it did not rain. And so while it wasn't raining, the Lord had him to go by a brook. And while he was at the brook, there was a raven commanded to take care of him. And when the brook dried up, the next step was go to Zarephath. There is a widow there that is going to sustain you. He goes to Zarephath. He meets the widow. The widow says that she and her son is about to eat and they are about to die he tell her give me a piece of you know bake the cake but give me a little first and then do what you need to do for you and your son so she does that it comes down to seeing that right when that happened it says that the they, her house did eat for many days the barrel of meal wasted not so you come down now to verse 17. Here's another situation that is about to take place. And right here it says, And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was, sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. So this is a situation. It's like her son is about to die. And she says unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? So the, the way she's looking at it is she's saying, Man, what's up with this? What, 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 what are you doing? Are you here to cause hardship on me? You know, to, to judge me based on the sins that I have done, she now has a whole different mindset about why he's there. You know, why Why are you here? What are you doing? Because when righteousness shows up, righteousness always exposes unrighteousness. So she immediately began to look at herself and began to just regurgitate about herself, the condition that she was in. What are you doing? Are you here? You know, to 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 bring my sin to remembrance and to slay my son. So she's giving an indicator that she evidently is a woman that has done some wrong in her life. She's done some wrong now. So she's saying, are you here to expose the wrong that I've done and to slay my son? And he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. So Elijah gets the young man, takes the young man. She's thinking that the man of God is here in a wrong spirit. She's thinking that because this circumstance has happened, that evidently this has happened because the man of God is here, but he's here in a wrong spirit. He's here to cause some hardship to me and to my son. He's here to bring my sins up to remembrance. You know, that's what he's here for. He's here to do that. She's got the wrong mentality, the whole wrong mentality, the whole entire time as to what is going on. So Elijah was not there to cause any harm to them, but a lot of times we as people, we think that when ever someone shows up, if y'all y'all have heard this, where people will go to people will go to church, and when they go to church, they'll hear some things be said that they are guilty of, and immediately they start projecting to think like you know who done told my business, you know whoever is in there that 
knows them and has um the pastor's phone number they thinking that somebody done called and done told the preacher my business and now you know it was like he was preaching to me i heard some people were talking to me you know when i was over at um gloria matthews after that day after they had buried her and it was a it was a few of them that was saying it was like hey like you know like they were talking to me one person said they quit going i quit going to church you know because every time i went it was like it like they were talking to me who are they supposed to talk to baby who who else is they supposed to talk to other than you you came into the house to to hear to hear from God. So who else is they supposed to talk to? So this woman here now, she's in a predicament. Cause she's now thinking like, wait a minute, what's going on here? You 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 know, you don't come to bring my sins up to remembrance and and to slay my son. You've forgotten everything that God has done for you thus this far. Now, because you are in an emotional situation, you now handling this with thinking that this is the, the man of God is coming to, you know, to expose you, to bring some type of shame unto you, and it's not the case. So what Elijah says to her in verse 19, he says, Give me your son. And he took him out of her bosom and he carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. I need to tell y'all something about that right there for y'all to catch what the Holy Spirit just said to me when I read that just then. I heard him just as clear as I'm talking to y'all. I want y'all to pay attention to the stance that had to take place. He took him out of her bosom. Now, why is this boy, this grown man in his mama's bosom? Why? Why is this grown man, and now we're going to get in trouble as women with this kind of stuff right here. We're going to get in some trouble as women, y'all, with this type of stuff right here. This is a hold on. Call from. There it is. Right here. Y'all hold Hello? on one second. Hold on one second. Covington County Jail, he Alabama. Did he did carried it. Carried by combined public communications. He did it right this time, but hold Three on. Three-way or call waiting is not. Your call has been accepted. Call me back. Call me. Call me. Hey, call me back. Call me back. I'm. 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 Call me back. Give me about. Give me about thirty, forty minutes. Call me back. I'm. I'm on. I'm on Zoom teaching. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, why is this grown man? This grown man now. He's in in, in her bosom. He's in her bosom, and I want y'all to see what had to take place. He's, he said, give me your son. And he took him out of her bosom. Took him out of her bosom. This is the kind of stuff that... Hold on a second. This is the kind of stuff that's kind of, you know, it can be tough on... um. It can be tough on us, on us women, on us mothers to have to hear this kind of stuff. But, I mean... It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. He takes the boy, he gets the boy, and he has to take the boy out of his mama out of his mama bosom. Now, she's got a whole attitude. And I want y'all to remember that this is the the woman that you just got through telling the man of God that you ain't got but just a little bit of stuff and you and your boy fishing to go mm -hmm. die. And you going and God provides a miracle for you. But now you back in another emotional situation. As to where now you gonna ask the man of God, what have I to do with you? You done came over here because you're trying to call my sins to remembrance and trying to slay my son. So now you're in a whole other situation because you're handling this from an emotional place. So it's got you being dishonorable. You know, it's got you being in a place of, of disrespect. But Elijah knew what his position was. He knew what he was sent in there to do. I need y'all to understand is several things in this that you can draw out of this. One of the things that you can understand is when a person knows their position and what God has called them to do, don't worry about them people. They'll be all right. It don't matter who they have to deal with. They'll be all right because God has anointed them to take it down. So don't don't you don't have to worry about that at all. At all. Nothing that she said moved Elijah because he knew what his assignment was. He knew what his purpose was. Now on the other hand, the issue with her was was you sitting up here with a grown man on your bosom. 
that's something you should be working out. That's something you should be looking at. Why is you got a grown man on your bus? Why? Why do you have a grown man on your bosom? Something wrong. And a man had to come and take him. A man had to come and take him. And he took him, verse 19, y'all see it on the screen, carried him up into a loft where he abode. Now, this is where Elijah abode. He took him into the place where he stayed and he laid him upon his own bed. See, a lot of times, that's the problem with us as women. We won't turn them boys over for a man to do something in their life. We the nigga. I'm sorry, I'm recording this and done said that. But we be, we be the nigga. Period. We won't turn them over for to let a man have something to say or something to do. Now, some of you women, and you'll say stuff like this right here. Well, if he ain't going to handle him right, that's, that's whatever. I, that, that, check it out now. If he ain't going to handle him right, I remember when I used to think Quincy was whooping them boys too hard. Ooh, I couldn't hardly stand it. I used to think he was whooping them so hard just for them to get grown and to go back and say, Daddy, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate, you know, when them, them whooping you gave me. It, well, they hurt now, Daddy. You know what I'm saying? But mama's hurt worse than yours. I used to rather get whooped by daddy than I did mama. Just to have to hear them say that. But I'm thinking, I'm cringing the whole entire time that he whooping them. Because that's me that don't want to get out the way to allow my sons to be reared up to become men, which I did a lot of crippling to. Y'all heard me talk about that before. You've heard me own up to that and admit that before. I did a lot of crippling to. I, I did not raise them. They were not like they should have been. It was a lot of uh, babying in areas, and they're still struggling now in areas because of, you know, certain things that had done. So you see this in this situation. Y'all know everything is in the Bible that we deal with. Everything that we face is in the Bible, every bit of it. But I want y'all to see, you do not have to worry about a person that has been anointed to do something. They will stay with the assignment, and most of the assignments that the anointing give you be hard. They be, you know, they be tasked. It's not always an easy assignment. Like God will have you to deal with a pompous jackass. You know what I'm saying? He will anoint you to do that. God sent a man to marry a whore. God sent a man that could not talk. Uh, Moses felt as though he had a stutter. He could not speak. But the Lord sent this man to the king to tell him to Pharaoh to let my people go. God will always, Jesus felt it was so difficult for him that he said, you know, if this cup, let this cup pass me by. See, there's something about us that always looks for the easy way out, and it's not always going to be the thing that's going to work. It's not always going to be the easy way out. A lot of times you have to trust God in what it is that God is saying to do. You have to learn skill. That's the thing that I, you have to learn skill, and a lot of times skill don't look logic to people. If you look in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, David said he teaches my hands to war. He skilleth me, which God will give you skill on how to take a joker down, exactly what to do on how to take a joker down. Not that you got to run from it, not that you got to, you know, we'll find ourselves praying, oh, it's going to be good. Oh, oh, be good. I've been in that position where, you know, oh, I ain't finna do whatever. You know, with that kind of stuff. But some things I had to realize that God has anointed me to deal with and some stuff I got to deal with, just like with me. Some people don't want to deal with me but they they can't take they can't help it i've been anointed for them so then they, you you just have to deal with it you know you deal with it until it can develop what needs to be developed on the inside of you so elijah wouldn't back away from it he didn't let what this woman that woman was slick out the mouth y'all that woman was a delphine she was a slick out the mouth right there she said well look at her what she told him in verse 18 what have i got to do with you y'all professional at being slick nigga what i got to do with you <laughs> Old oh, man of God, what you don't come over here for? You don't come over here to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son. That's what you don't come over here to do. Not even realizing that woman, there's something wrong with you. Was sitting here with this grown man on your breast. I ain't seen none of that now. I ain't thought none of that was strange. Cause they've been sucking all their lives, so you ain't think none of that was strange. But you slick talking the answer. Slick talking the answer. Slick talking the answer. I'm working on me, y'all. Slick talking the answer. 
Slick talking the answer. She slick talking the answer. Slick talking. But the answer didn't move. The answer didn't move. The answer came with a purpose. That's how you know when people been anointed for you. And when you've been anointed for a person, then it ain't going to change. It ain't going to change. It don't matter what happened. It ain't going to change. He knew that was an assignment that he had to do. So he goes and he said, listen, get, give me this boy. Give me this boy. He takes the boy, takes him out of her bosom, takes the boy up into the loft where he was, puts the boy on his own bed, saying this boy needs to be in the presence of a man. You just done, just about done made him a sissy. He needs to be in the presence of a man. Verse 20. And he cried unto the Lord. Now this is Elijah, still carrying on his assignment, no matter how much she done sleep talk. He still, he cries out unto the Lord and says, Oh Lord, my God, has thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn? By slaying her son? Elijah's asking the Lord, what is this? You know, what 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 is, what is going what's what's happening here? Well, it may be something going on. I don't know something going on. I don't see. What is this? And he cried unto the Lord. And he stretched, verse 21 says, and he stretched himself upon the child three times. He knew his assignment. May the Lord allow everybody that is anointed for me to stick with their assignment with me. And if y'all are smart, you will say the same thing. Because you don't want nobody to walk away from you before it's up. Before this assignment is complete. You don't want nobody to see the mistakes that you made and quit you before the assignment is complete. When they have been assigned to you. When they have been purposely designed by God for you. You don't want that. Because it's going to leave you with a void. Because there's an emptiness that comes with it. It's going to be a void. And so he stretched himself upon the child. He did it three times. He didn't do it one time and quit. He did it three times. And he cried unto the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, I pray thee. Let this child's soul come into him again. When you have been anointed for someone and when someone has been anointed for you. It's just what it is. When you have been anointed for someone and someone has been anointed for you, it's just what it is. And it is something to be grateful for. It is something to be grateful for. I want you to think about the people that you have had to apologize to. The people that you have wronged and you have erred and they have stuck with you. They were anointed for you. They were anointed for you. I've learned to not take people for granted. And I'm steady learning. Not take people for granted. To find out those. And you will know. You will know. I'm learning that. One of the reasons you will know is. is you, you, you just can't seem to shake it. You can't shake them. You know it's just something. It's something about it. When there is an anointing there for it. You just can't seem to shake them. You can't seem to shake them. And I'll give y'all a hint, a little nugget about me. I don't, I've learned to be okay with it not being perfect. You know, because if I look for the perfection in it, I'm going to get rid of them. Because they're not perfect, just like I'm not. So if I look for the perfection in them, and I just want everything to be so perfect and all that kind of stuff, we're not going to complete our assignment. We're not. Because I'm going to be like, you got to go. Or they're going to be like that with me. You got to go. Whenever I do something or I say something, you got to go. They're going to be like that with me and I'm going to be like that with them. So I have to, when I find out, the first thing I do is I, I'm going to stop to see when people come into my life. Is this person supposed to be here? Because if if there is an assignment attached to it, if there is something that is supposed to come out of it and I identify that, that's why I always tell y'all, and y'all have heard me say this all through the years, when people come into the ministry, the first thing I do when they come into my life as I start trying to find out, I'm going to seek out their purpose. What, what, why are they here? 
That's the first question that I'm gonna ask. Why are they here? Because if I find out that they need to be there, there is a purpose in them being there, then there is a grace that comes on you to be able to endure it. It's a grace that God will put upon you that helps you sojourn with them. I want y'all to notice the word that was used in verse 20. Pay attention to the Bible when it's talking. Notice what Elijah says in verse 20. He said, whom I sojourn, which means I'm on a journey with these people. These people, you sent me here. You told me to go to Zarephath, that there was a widow there that would sustain me. Sustain me that I'm going to be here for a period of time. So in the midst of him being there for a period of time, he knew that these people are vital to me. So I just can't abandon them like that. I can't just walk away. See, you got to be careful. Don't be praying folk out people's life that's supposed to be in it. Shut up now. Don't do that. Mind your business when it comes to stuff. What you do is, is pray the will of the Lord. Pray the will of God. Get your flesh and your emotions out of it. Because there are some things that people just have to go through. There, is, there are learning things that we just have to deal with. Sometimes a person has got to have a no good joker. Because baby, she'll become the best person that there is after she gets through with that no good joker. She'll be more skilled and she'll have so much mercy to be able to teach other young women to help other people. Somebody's got to bear, bear, bear the burden of it. Period. Somebody has the better burden of it. And so you have to be very, very careful and always identify when people come in your life. What what they what they here for? What what are they, why are they here, God? Why are they here? And if it just won't leave, it's just something all the time. You know, it might die, then it's back, it might die, then it's back, you know. Pay attention to that because there is something vital that's coming out of that. Y'all remember me telling the um, telling the, the situation of what happened to me. I hate to call it a story because it's not it's not a story. It's real. So I don't even call the Bible a story. I hate when people say that. You know, and the story of Joseph. I, what you mean? The life of Joseph. That's what I say. The life of Jonah. How you gonna call it a story and then think it's true? You, that's why you're treating it fictitiously. That's why you won't buy into it. It's because you keep calling it a story. Like it's something that's not real. No, no, no. This is what happened. Y'all can recall me talking about the fact of uh, the man that was funneling me as a child. You know, Kimmy Bland, he was funneling me as a child. What happened to me the day I came down to Op on a Sunday, I would come to Op on Sunday and spend time with the family. I was living over in Midland City. I would drive over and spend time with the family on Sunday and all hang out with baby them. We laugh and we talk. I turn the corner down there by Miss Leeper. I look, I see Kimmy. He coming down the sidewalk from like by Miss Molly Jesse them. He's a little bit closer because so I could recognize that who he was. I hit the corner and went on about my business. I noticed him, but I went on about my business. I went back the next Sunday. He was in the same spot, but closer up coming up towards my car. I seen him that time. I took note. I was like, mm -hmm. I knew, you know, it was like, hmm, it's something, you know, he's standing out for some reason. But I still didn't just sit and marinate on it to, you know, to see what the deal was. So I come that third Sunday, I come back. When I come back that third Sunday, he was right up there when I'm getting ready to turn. I pretty much like hit the man, you know, could have could have hit him when I'm getting ready to turn. I stopped and I said, God, wait a minute. It's the third time. Why is this man here? He said, I want you to let him go. I said, I forgive you for what you did. I forgive you. See, but now, had I not paid attention to why is this man here and just went with the emotion of he wronged me, he had no business doing that to me, which he didn't. But had I went with the emotion of it, I wouldn't have received the healing that I got, that I needed from that. So you have to be careful, you know, be very careful with, with the type of stuff. You, you, you know, you, you could find yourself getting off into a realm of witchcraft, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's kind of a technical form of control because that's actually some of what this chick was doing here, what this widow was doing here. She was, uh, you know, really trying to, to play on Elijah. 
and on the fact of the power that he possessed. You just go there and let my kid die. You know, see, it was pretty much like a, it gets into a control mechanism, a, a, a slickness that rests on the inside of all of us. We have the potential to do that. We, we, you know, we have the propensity to be able to do that. We can be slick. I can do it, baby. When I did, they're, they're feeding the good. She the best. I, I can shut some stuff down, y'all. I kid you not. Because I, I know the world. I, I've been out there, you know. I, I know it. So, you know, I can be looking right at a joker and be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like that, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and have, we have the pro, the propensity to do that. And this is what was happening right here. Notice how she come at him. She was like, if I don't get you going to give me my way. I mean, you're going to, you, 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 you know, you're going to make this, you're going to let this right here happen like this. You know, come over here to cause some trouble. That's what you done did. You done come over here to start up, you know, to start up some stuff. And so, but he is adamant because he's saying, I know I have traveled with these people. God placed me here with these people. Now, I'm telling y'all, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Just because you find journey or trouble on a journey doesn't mean that that is not your journey. I, I, don't, I, I don't think y'all hear me tonight. Just because you run into trouble on a journey doesn't mean that's not your journey. Y'all, man, I wish y'all could hear what, I wish I could disclose some of the stuff that God is saying to me right now. I, look, I got something that if I sit myself down and just be what I need to be and don't cut the buck and all this kind of stuff, man, God going to be so good to me through something and through an individual. He going to be very, very good to me. Very good to me through it. Because there are some things that God is having to work out in me as well. Some things that's having to take place. Just because you see some trouble in something. Don't always, you know, talk about, I don't think you need to be in there. I don't think you need to be in watch, watch it. Some things people are anointed to go through. They are anointed to go through it. Jehu was anointed to take Jezebel out. Nobody else could take her out but him. Her husband couldn't do nothing. He was emotionally strapped. The prophets were scared of him. Elijah, the same Elijah we talking about, ran in a cave from him. Jehu came out the cave and pow pow with the one two on. You have to know when there is an anointing and there is an assignment. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Find the particular prayers that need to be prayed. And pray those prayers. Father, I thank you for your divine will coming out of this. Your divine purpose coming out of this. I've had to learn to do that with, to channel that. And my oldest son, Fussy, has been one of the hardest tasks for me in learning to do that because I don't care for Mika. And because of, and I say that honestly, and y'all know it's honest, you know, don't wish no death or nothing like that on her, but I just don't think she, I don't think she's the one that's for my son. But as I talk to him, I can hear things he's, learning because of that relationship. See, it's certain things he's gathering now because of that relationship. But a lot of times we are let our emotions want to run folk out of something that God has anointed them to deal with. It's a purpose in it for them. It's a purpose in it. You have to Learn to trust God and fully be okay. God ain't going to let nothing happen. I, I, I'm convinced. I'm not sure about y'all, but I don't believe God is going to let nothing happen. I just don't. What he has his hand on, I don't believe that he's going to let nothing happen. I don't. I don't. I don't believe that God will anoint 
numbers for a purpose. But then let us get defeated in it. I don't. John the Baptist was something I did not understand for a long time. Years on my journey with God. And I would I wanted to understand certain things in the Bible, but I wouldn't ask people. Because I don't like for people to give me their opinions. I always await for God and some things that took 20 years before God helped me understood it. But I got the revelation. I will always ask God, how in the world this man was born to be a forerunner of Christ? But you allow him to be beheaded? That don't match. That is still theory that atheists and all talk about right now to this day. How can he be such a great God? And he gonna sit there and let somebody get beheaded that was doing work for him. What, how, how can he be that kind of God? And you know, people, cruel things happen. These children getting raped in the world and all. They would want to know. And I question that. Like, God help me to understand this about John the Baptist. How is that? But God showed me. He said, he fulfilled his assignment. He said, that's the part you're missing. Did you think his assignment was going to last forever? It couldn't, Delphine. He had to die. Just like you got to die. Just like the next person's got to die. There's a death date. But he fulfilled his assignment. You're missing it, baby. God gave me that revelation, put me at peace, and he did. Even Paul said, it is finished. I fought the good fight of faith. I run my course, he said. When the assignment is complete, that's when the victory is won. But we'll look at it and we'll miss it because we're looking at it from a corner eye and an emotional eye. We're thinking, oh, it shouldn't be like that. Ooh, it shouldn't be. Oh, no, no. No, 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 no. You know how many people have told marriage folk that's done went through changes to get divorced and throw the scripture out? You know, the Bible says they be in there and cheat on you or what have you. You got probable cause to get a divorce, and the Bible does say that. It does say that. But the Bible also says if they want to reconcile, reconcile. But nobody supports that. They're very quick on talking about discarding and throwing away and not realizing that now because these people have overcame this, this infidelity that they have the greatest testimony among other people that will face infidelity. They are, they are people, there are people watching them that probably won't even ever tell them, y'all gave me hope because, you know, to see y'all be together and, you know what I'm saying, and smiling and, you know, you know, and stuff. It gave me hope. So, but based on not knowing what a person's purpose is and just thinking out of your emotions, you run them off when that ain't even so. That's not even the case. You taking it personal. With something that's going on. You can't do that. You can't do that, y'all. You can't do that. Everybody has their own journey. And must Jesus bear this cross alone. And all the world go free. Surely if there's a cross for him, there's one for the dear family. He has purpose in the things that he does. Learn how to pray and the right effective prayers. The right effective prayers. To be honest with y'all, God, about two weeks ago, God 
dealt with me about something that I that I do. I'm notorious at returning things back to sender. But God dealt with me about that. He said, you got to learn a wisdom. There are two different things that happened in the Bible. David returned things to sender. But when you look over in the New Testament, we were taught to pray for those that despitefully use us and speak all manner of evil against us. It did not say return to sin. So the Lord said you have to have wisdom on when to use certain weapons. You could be returning something to a sender and they were just naively doing that to you, which means they weren't really aware of what they were doing. They were just naively. Now you've sent something harsh back to them when you just really needed to ask me to have mercy on them. Say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a strategic art to prayer. Strategic. And any time that you are in intercession, you're praying for someone, you've got to be very careful the things that come out your mouth. Because you can set up a warfare by thinking you hipping warfare. Very rare. Very rare. Do I. Attack relationships. I don't feel like me could. Is the no one is the is the no one candidate for my son. No hand, no secret, no no bars. That's why I don't. I do not. I do not. And in my emotions, I will say, oh, I gone. But that is my emotions. That is sick of her. I know it. That is the one place that I know for a fact I'm working on. Is that with her? I thought I had her gone. She done took that boy out of school last week and said that they were moving them over. Baby. Oh, Lord. I just thought it couldn't be no better. Just for fussing to tell me Monday. Kathy left her down here. Because when Kathy got ready to leave, she got mad because Mika wasn't ready. She said, she, you know, I said, well, she should have had all her stuff already packed. Now, this is what I said. Yeah. She knew she was supposed to be leaving Monday. Mm -hmm. She should have had the stuff packed. Because I was hoping. Oh, Jesus, Calgary was going to take me away. Still here. Still here. And guess what I'm still doing? working on me with it. Still lame mastered it yet with her. Still lame mastered it. But I'm just honest enough to tell the truth about me. Mm -hmm. Still ain't mastered it. Boy, I just knew we were finna be free at last. Thank God Almighty. Then they told me the other day, Tuesday, 
She's supposed to be messing around with a uh, young man here. Oh. <laughs> I failed the test again. Go get what I said. Please convince him to marry her. <laughs> Tell him I'll pay for it. That's what I said, y'all. Woo, I said, Brand Bell let me down. I thought he was going to get me out. He done went back to Marquis. Look at that. That's what I said. Oh, I ain't got to lie. That's what I said. Sure did. Okay, that's Thorn. That's Thorn. And it ain't going to get no better for me until I lay down and fix it. And I know it. know it so y'all see what I'm trying to tell you here I'm straight out of description Elijah had to get that boy from her he prayed he did it three times and verse 22 says and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah <laughs> thank God for folk that won't give up and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Thank God for the people that don't give up on you. And no, it ain't easy. Because this boy, this boy was literally near death. So no, it ain't always easy. But you know, when you know your assignment, you'll stay true to the course. So Elijah took the child. Brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know, thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. But now this is what's so weird about that that gets me. It wasn't until she got something out of the deal. And she would believe. I'm going to rest my case right there. Any questions or any comments? Yeah, um, it's sort of like what you're going through now with that incident yesterday where you took the guy. Elijah, hold your peace. God got it. You have to trust the process. Let go and let God handle it. It's difficult, but you have to. It can be difficult. You know it was difficult for that woman to see a kid like that. The boy was literally dead. But there was a plan in it. Mm -hmm. God had a plan in it. God had a purpose in it. I'm working on some things, y'all. One thing that I do endeavor to do, I'm going to conquer some stuff. I'm going to conquer it. As long as I can keep getting revelation. And I got all this revelation just now. As long as I can keep getting revelation like this, I'm going to get it. I don't get it. Um, I like also see like facts with different things. Like, okay, so there were some things I had noticed, but then it's kind of like as a as a person, you have to know how to be an intercessor regarding the things that you see, and not take them personal. So God can make can you basically be an intervention, retaining that which you see. I'm trying to convey it right. It's it's not personal. Nothing that you see as a person is personal. Um, especially in areas that that that's areas of growth, but it's definitely on how you conceptualize them and whether you allow prayer to be your your allow be your um 
not method of coping, but allow prayer to be the essential way of handling things so God can make entry way into this into the situations. You know, because it's that we pray, then you know, things aren't susceptible to change because you can see a thing, but if you handle it out of your flesh, I think lately has been like a reminder, like what God has revealed things to me and the things that he was revealed was before you to be an intercessor, not for you to take any of those things yeah. personally. Yeah. And when you're operating carnally, yeah. you can't be an instrument for God True. in any shape, form, or fashion. True. And so True. for that, I would like to repent because I see my ways and my errors because True. God wants to use me, True. but I wasn't in a position to do True. so. True. True. Very true. I'm so proud of you for that, Rika, with that, because that, that is absolute 100% true. Because that's the first thing that happens. See, everything happens with prayer. Everything. There is nothing that manifests in this earth without prayer, except a man pray. God cannot do anything in this earth. And if he can get me in my emotions, then I ain't going to pray. I ain't going to pray. I guess I'm going to have to go. Y'all, you know, this Carlos trying to call me, and I'm going to have to get this. Prepaid call um, wrong. Hello? Y'all, going. Um, I'm going to have to and go because it's like 15 minutes, and I know he's going to need to talk. Alabama. I hate to cut Carried this off, y'all. Um, just, just, I hate to cut this off, y'all, because I know it's good. It's, good. it's good. It's good. Lord, help automatically us. Disconnect Father, this call. in Jesus' name. This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Man, y'all, this is good. I know it is, but I need to talk to him. I need to get this straight. I need to talk to him and make sure he's okay. Nine three, your all phone right. has been accepted. So, oh all right, Carlos, boy, boy, no, boy, 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 you, boy, you got my, you broke, got my heart broke. All right, I love y'all. I'll call you again and again. Man, man, we got to be encouraged. Man, when I'm telling you, I love y'all. Man.